Hey everybody, welcome back and thanks for watching Tactical Weapon Combat Ready. In this video, we're going to talk about how easy or not easy it is to actually legally purchase a firearm in the United States. So, let's get to it. All right, so I'm always seeing all these videos where people are saying stuff like, it is easier to go into a gun shop and purchase a gun than it is to go into a library and rent a library back. Okay, no. Let's talk about what are the requirements for actually purchasing a gun legally in the United States. So I am a federally Fire, federal firearms license dealer and FFL, so I do go th through this process somewhat often. Now, I'm not giving my opinion on what um, requirements I approve or disapprove on. I'm just going to go over what the requirements actually are at this moment. So, let's look at the actual 4473 paperwork that is required to be filled out by the buyer and by the licensed FFL. So, the first section you're going to be putting the manufacturer or importer of the firearm, the model, the serial number, the type, and the caliber of the firearm. And there's multiple sections right there, so you can buy multiple guns at the same time. You do have to write in how many guns they purchased during this uh, paperwork, so the day of, and the actual background check. If you purchase more, two or more of the same type of gun, so two rifles or two pistols, at the same time, there is additional paperwork that you have to fill out and mail out to uh, the uh, ATF Multiple Firearm Purchase Center. And then you also have to mail out a copy of that to your local law enforcement and then keep an additional copy with this paperwork right here. So if you purchase more than one firearm, if it's the same type, so rifle and rifle, pistol and pistol, there is additional paperwork that you would have to fill out in order to uh, do this properly. After that, you have the buyers, the transferees, last name, first name, middle name. Then you have the address, number and street, city, state, zip code, county, parish, or borough. I've never had to do anything with a parish or borough. Okay, I don't, is that a thing in the United States? I don't even know. Okay, uh, then uh, you have the, your place of birth, whether it's the United States and the city they're in, and then foreign country, you have the height, the weight, the sex, which is male, female, female or non-binary, and that non-binary actually would be an automatic denial in most cases, and then you have the birth date, and then right under that you have social security number, okay? Now, all of this information needs to match perfectly with a government issued photo identification. So in most cases, it's gonna be a state ID card or residency card or driver's license is actually the most commonly used, okay? So you have to have a picture and verify that it's the person in front of you and everything has to match perfectly. So if they just recently moved, their address does not match what's on their card they're gonna, that's a denied. They have to come back with additional information showing what their current address is. So as long as it's a, it's a state um, issued document, so like the MVD, if you updated your driver's license because you moved, they're gonna give you a temporary copied sheet of your new driver's license and all your information. So that can be brought in, but it has to be a state document or government document. It can't just be like, oh, well, Here's my Chick-fil-A membership card. Okay, it doesn't work like that, okay? Um, so you have to have all that information. It has to match perfectly with what's on there with the exception of height and weight because that can fluctuate and change, okay? Then after that, you have ethnicity and race, so Hispanic or Latino, not Hispanic or Latino. Then you have American Indian or Alaska Native, Asian, Black or African American, Native Hawaiian or other specific Islander, and white. And you can, with the race, you can mark multiples of those. Then it's going to ask, are you a United States citizenship? Which 
uh, what citizenship do you have? United States of America or other countries? Okay. Now, if you if you mark the United States of America, that's your citizen, then things will be done a little bit differently than if you are from another country, but you're here legally. So we'll get into that here in a little bit. Okay. Then we have these yes or no questions. Now, the first one has to be yes. It's asking, are you the actual buyer of the gun? Yes, I am the person purchasing this gun. That has to be yes. All of these others should be no. If any of these others are marked yes, that's an automatic denial of a firearm. Okay, so the first one's asking, are you the actual transferee buyer of the firearm? Yes. Are you under indictment or uh, information in any court for a felony or any other crime for which the judge could imprison you for more than one year? Or are you a current member of the military who has been charged with violations of the Uniform Code of Military Justice and whose charges have been referred to a general court martial? Have you ever been co convicted of any in, in any court, including a military court, of a felony or any other crime for which the judge could have imprisoned you for more than one year, even if you received a shorter sentence, including probation? Are you a fugitive from justice? Are you an unlawful user of or addicted to marijuana or any depressant, stimulant, narcotic drug, or any other controlled substance? Warning, the use or possession of marijuana remains unlawful under federal law regardless of whether it has been legalized or decriminalized for medical or recreational purposes in the state where you reside. So even if you have a medical marijuana card, you're denied. If you have a recreational uh, right in the state that you're in, you are denied. So then we go to the back side of that sheet and we have several more yes or no questions. Have you ever been adjudicated as a mental defective or have you ever been committed to a mental institution? Have you ever been j discharged from the armed forces under dishonorable conditions? Are you subject to a court order including a military protection order issued by a military judge or magistrate? restraining you from harassing, stalking, or threatening your child or intimate partner or child of such partner? Have you ever been convicted in any court of a misdemeanor crime of domestic violence? Or are you or have you ever been a member of the military and been convicted of a crime that included as an element the use of force against a person as identified in the instructions? Have you ever renounced your United States citizenship? Are you an alien illegally or unlawfully in the United States? Now, these last two, you can answer yes to these, and that's where you're going to have additional documentation that need, is required. Are you an alien who has been admitted to the United States under non-immigration visa? If you are such an alien, do you fall within any of the exceptions stated in the instructions? So if you answer yes to those, you may still be able to purchase a firearm, but that's going to require additional government issued documentation that you have to provide. Okay, then we have the buyer signature and then the date that they filled all this out. And then the FFL is now going to fill out information here. So that you're marking, is it a handgun, long gun, rifle or shotgun, other firearm, which is a frame or receiver. Then you're going to write down if you are at a, uh, an approved gun show, you're going to write down the issued identification, what type it is, and then the verification number on that identification, and then the expiration date of that uh, government identification card. Okay, then there's a couple other places. Uh, these sections I've never really used. That's going to be if you're military and you're deployed or you're stationed at an army base and you actually don't live there or in that state and you actually reside somewhere else, you can still purchase a firearm, but you'll need additional documentation for that. Okay, then we go on to uh, the next part, which is probably the biggest, I mean, the most important part of this whole entire paperwork, and that is uh, the actual background check. So you're calling or submitting information online to the FBI NICS background check. So you're going to put the month, day, and year that uh, it was submitted or called in, and then you're going to be giving a, given a reference number, which is known as the NTN number, and that is how you're going to, uh, uh, that's just the 
number that is used to associate this background check with whoever you're doing it on. So they'll give you that number and then they're going to give you a response to the background check and it's either going to be a proceed here in Arizona that means that you're able to purchase and take the fire, firearm home this at this moment. Some states may have a requirement that you have to have a waiting period. Okay then you have a delayed that again here in Arizona that would be a three to five day business um, hold on it where the Nick's background center has to call you back and give you a response at a later date. Then you have denied. That means that the purchaser is unable to legally own a firearm and they are denied that purchase and then canceled. I've never really had to do the canceled before. So that would be if uh, for whatever reason the buyer all of a sudden is like, you know what, never mind. I don't even want the gun. I don't have money. Cancel it. You know, whatever the case. You can get around calling in the background check or uh, submitting information to the NICS background check if you have a, a qualifying uh, license, so a concealed weapons permit here in Arizona. With that, that means that you have to submit fingerprints, you have to provide additional information, and then you get a um, CCW license, which then means that you've already done a more strenuous background check in order to get that license so you don't actually have to call it in every single time. Okay, then after that, the FFL fills out all the information uh, here and then signature and date and then that finishes it. So no, purchasing a firearm is not simple or easy. It takes a lot of work on the FFL side as well as the FBI's background check center to make this all happen. So you could say that it could be quick and efficient, but simple and easy, no, not, not even close to that. You basically have to live your entire life as a law-abiding citizen and you haven't gotten into any major trouble ever, otherwise that disqualifies you from legally owning a firearm. So that is incredibly inaccurate. So don't believe anybody that tells you that it's easy to purchase a firearm. Just walk into a gun shop and buy any gun you want because it ain't that easy. Well, that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please find us on Rumble as well. We do have more content on Rumble. That's Tactical Weapon, one word. And until next time, we'll see you later.